Hey guys, this is Pro Gaming 2008, and today we are going to be finally building, after a long, long, long time of waiting, my dream PC build of 2008. So I have all of the components here, and they are pretty powerful. We are going to test them in modern games mostly. And in some unoptimized games such as Crisis, and the performance just might surprise you guys. And the highlight of this video is of course the processor. I have some really nice hardware for this build, and I will be using this build for a lot of projects. And even I can make videos on that, and I will show you later in future videos so without further ado let's get going the motherboard is an MSI G31 TM P21 or MS7529 version 1.6 which is an LJ775 motherboard with the Intel G31 chipset supports the Core 2 Duos, the Intel Celeron Dual Cores, the Pentium Dual Cores and also the Core 2 Quads and even the Core 2 Extreme Dual Core processors. This motherboard can also support up to 8GB of DDR2 800MHz RAM non-ECC unbuffered CPU is the Intel Core 2 Quad Q9550 running at 2.83 GHz has 12 MB of level 2 cache and a front side bus of 1333 MHz and a 95 watt TDP as well. For the CPU cooler, I'm just using this Shunda CPU cooler that I got from AliExpress. The Core 2 Quad is not listed here, but uh, it should handle 95 watts because it mentions the Athlon X2, Phenom 64, i5, i7, Pentium D even, Pentium 4, Celeron, Core 2 Duo. Four gigabytes of DDR2 800 megahertz RAM. This is temporary. When I get my upgrade of eight gigabytes, I will uh, upgrade the RAM. So four gigabytes is temporary for now, but it should do the job for this PC for now. And finally. For the most important part of this build, apart from the processor, is the GPU. It is the famous AMD Radeon HD 5770 with 1GB of GDDR5 VRAM. And it is the equivalent of the GTX 650 with the 1GB of VRAM. 
and for the PSU I'm using this FSP HE500. It is a 500 watt power supply but has a maximum peak power of 550 watts. So this is really good if I want to upgrade the build later on. I will upgrade the build later on so this will really help me. And this is the case for this build. It is a cooler master case but I don't know exactly the model. The thing I know the most about this case is that it is brand new. Yes, this is a brand new case. I also added a 120mm fan right here to help cool the hard drives because they give a ton of heat. So it gives both AC97 and HD audio, so it is retro friendly, USB of course, and the classic front panel connectors. And in this bag, we have a ton of standoffs, screws, and also a PC speaker. That's really good, we're going to use that as well. So let's put the components and the other drives. I didn't show them, I didn't show the drives, like the hard drives and the DVD drives, but uh, I don't really no need to show them anyway, because the main parts like the CPU and the GPU are more important for the benchmarks of this build. So now, let's get the case going. Let's install the standoffs. I'm gonna do that off camera because it's a big pain to do that. And then I will install the motherboard on camera as well as the IO shield of course. Let's start by adding the PSU first because if you remember the heatsink was uh, a bit large compared to the uh, top side of the motherboard. So I'm adding the PSU first just in case. Just in case if it doesn't uh, fit properly or if uh, it prevents the uh, PSU from being installed properly. So this is why I'm installing the PSU already. <sighs> Since this case is brand new, uh, I struggled a bit to put the PSU in place. Screws are a bit misaligned, sadly. I mean, they are not, they are aligned, but uh, they are a bit pushed to the edges of the holes. And now it's time for the worst part of this build, the cable management. Time to finally put the motherboard in place. And yes, as you can see, I did the best cable management possible for this case. I did it off camera because it was a big pain. So finally, we can put the motherboard inside the case and screw it in. I installed the standoffs also because yeah there were some standoffs um, that came with the case if you remember all right i did a lot of cable management and for the front uh 120 millimeter fan here i could not even plug it here it didn't even reach the system fan connector so i had to use one of the uh, adapters molex uh, fan adapters that came with the case and yeah, I know that it makes a bit of a mess inside, but not that much, so it won't really matter that much. But now, it's time to install the GPU, and yes, I have to take these, uh, I have to take two of these uh, metal shields, because the 5770 is a dual slot card, Mo like, of course, like most uh, GPUs today.
There we go. Finally, let's install the GPU. And of course, screw it. Secure it to the case. Otherwise, it will damage the PCIe pins down the road. There we go, the GPU is now secure. It is finally time to install the optical drives. One of them is IDE. And the other one is SATA. If you look at the front at the drives, they look exactly the same because they are both made by NEC or NEC. But the one on the top was made in 2005. This is the IDE drive and the SATA drive was made in 2007. But this one uh, is more quiet when reading CDs or DVDs. Now let's screw in these drives and then install the hard drives. And there we go guys, the hard drives are installed and yeah, it was a big pain, seriously. Even SATA cables, because of the GPU, uh, it was a big pain to plug them into the motherboard. So now I'm going to in be installing the final component for this build, which is an additional 120 millimeter fan at the back of the case so it can help cooling with the CPU and with the entire inside of the case. God damn it man. And there we go guys, here's the finished PC. After a lot of cable management, it still looks a bit messy on the middle of the case and a bit of the right, but still it looks much much better than what I wanted. So now we will power it up and I will show you the bar settings I used. I will also uh, boot into Windows 7 64 bit with all the updates and then I'll show you the specs of the system to prove you that I'm running the Q9550 and so on. And then I'm going to show you the benchmarks for most modern games I have installed on here. Let's now set the BIOS settings. The computer has posted, so that's a very good sign already.
Alright guys, since the BIOS settings are set and I did some tests to make sure the machine boots properly, now it's time to see the full boot of the Yorkfield PC aka my dream build of 2008 running Windows 7 off the Core 2 Quad. And yeah, as you can see, there's a ton of icons on the desktop. And they are not completely rearranged, if I can say that properly. Some of them are missing because I didn't uh, install all the apps properly. Like Defragler, I had to reinstall that for some reason. But otherwise, the desktop, as you can see, is almost full. Even including this, Nanami Madobe. And if I double click on it, of course, Windows Nanami Madobe pops up on the desktop, of course. And I can change her size and everything, move her around the taskbar. And there we go. The uh, OS 10 of Windows 7 is here on Windows 7 itself. How cool is that? It actually reports 6 gigabytes of memory, but I think that's an issue due to the BIOS. So, in the future, I will update the BIOS if uh, it keeps reporting that issue, even with 8 gigabytes of RAM when I get the upgrade. But if it doesn't have that issue anymore, then I will keep the BIOS as it is. Because you can see here, even here it says 6 gigabytes of RAM, 4 gigabytes usable. I really do have 4 gigabytes of RAM on this system. Let's now start the gaming benchmarks. Starting with Minecraft version 1.16.4, we are running at 1080p with the fabulous graphical preset and the view distance set to 12 chunks. Even in this village, which is quite demanding, where we can see villagers, other mobs and also some water, the performance is really smooth. It never dipped below 60 FPS. Now, Minecraft is an OpenGL game. Nvidia cards are really strong in OpenGL compared to AMD, but even with this Radeon 5770, it performs extremely well at 1080p with 12 chunks and the fabulous graphics. So yes, Minecraft is playable on this machine. Here we have Hello Neighbor running at 1080p with all the graphical options set to Ultra. And yeah, this is really an ultimate stress test for the GPU because since I made the objects much bigger, uh, it does stress the system more and yeah, it does run at around 30 to 40 FPS, but it's still playable Hello neighbor is really optimized for all the processes <laughs> Next up is Metro 2033 Redux 
the Redux version has improved graphics which is a good stress test for the system and we can see that at 1080p with the graphical settings set to medium with 16x anisotropic filtering and yeah it does struggle we're getting less than 30 fps so uh, I will not call this that playable I know that people like the cinematic 24 or 30 fps but in my opinion uh, a first person shooter or third person shooter and even action games are not that well playable at 30 fps it will ruin your gaming skills so this is why I recommend getting better hardware for this game and yeah it struggles a bit on this machine so yeah not that well playable this is Blur a really gorgeous looking racing game that still uses DirectX 9 we are running at 1080p with maximum graphical settings and with 8x anti-aliasing anti-aliasing has a severe impact on uh, performance in weaker processes so yeah even though this game is designed to run better on a higher clocked dual core CPU this lower clocked core 2 quad running at 2.8 gigahertz still runs pretty decent I don't see this unplayable at all racing games are playable starting from 30 or 40 FPS so yeah I will call Blur and other racing games playable at this frame rate here we have Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition running at 1080p max details 8x anti-aliasing and we can see that it never drops below 60 FPS once again I know that this game's pretty old it's from 2009 or something but it's still quite demanding even with DirectX 9 instead of DirectX 10 I chose the fixed scene integrated benchmark because we can see that all, with all the NPCs around it's more demanding it's a good stress test for the system and we can see at the end it never dipped below 60 fps so we can see that yes resident evil 5 is playable on this machine unfortunately fortnite is a no-go before the update it was fully working i even put uh, i'll put a video showing you the performance on a simple map with no complex geometry and it was running at 60 fps locked because i enabled vsync for a tear free experience but as you can see with the update it's a no go unfortunately so sadly unless if i upgrade the operating system i will not be able to play fortnite on this computer but i could upgrade to windows 10 for example but since i hate windows 10 i will stick with windows 7 and just stick with the other games that still support this operating system like Genshin Impact for example. So unfortunately Fortnite is a no go. Let's move on to the other games shall we? Here we have GTA 4 Hudson Miku Edition running at 1080p with I can't say high details but GTA 4 is a big pain to test because there are a ton of graphical options in the graphics menu so I'll just put a picture showing the graphics settings are used so most of them are set to high the water is set to very high the view distance and the detail distance are set to 30 and I disabled vSync to get the maximum FPS and we can see that the game struggles I was trying to push the game to its absolute limit by enabling explosive bullets on the trainer and we can see that yeah it's not silky smooth because GTA 4 just like Crisis is a very unoptimized game and it's a really high-end PC to run at 60 FPS most of the time so yeah GTA 4 is playable but again it's not silky smooth at 60 FPS here we have GTA 5 running at 1080p with the normal details it's normal details but again I'll put on the screen a footage of all the used details And I've also switched the uh, render method to DirectX 11 so that we can really push this hardware to its limits. And the reason why I'm doing really intense police chases in GTA 4 and GTA 5 is because this is quite CPU demanding to render all the NPCs and the cops around you and all the explosions, the shooting and all of that. So this is why I'm doing a really heavy police chase to really see the entire performance of the components in here so we can see that yes 
the Core 2 Quad and the HD 5770 with 4 gigabytes of RAM does run GTA 5. It's not silky smooth, but it's smoother than GTA 4 because GTA 5 is more optimized. So yeah, now let's move on to the next game. We have an older game, Need for Speed The Run, running at 1080p with high details. It runs at around 38 FPS in the beginning of the game, which is the most demanding area we can try for this benchmark. And yeah, with ultra details, I have tried that off camera and it ran worse. It ran less than 30 FPS, so high details is more appropriate for this game. Even with high details, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And I chose the beginning of the game as the benchmark because with the cars shooting at you, this is uh, quite a demanding scene for the processor. This game can take advantage of more than two cores, such as a quad core processor. So yeah, this game is playable, but keep in mind that it won't run at 60 FPS locked if you don't have a better graphics card. Here we have another Need for Speed game. This one is Carbon. Yeah, it's older, uses DirectX 9, but uh, it's quite GPU demanding. Even on period correct machines, uh, it struggles. I have tried that on a Windows XP machine, if you remember, a long time ago. But on this machine, which is clearly overkill, I applied a patch to set a custom resolution. The resolution here is 1920 by 1080, so 1080p. Maxed out all the details, and we can see that it is silky smooth, running at over 80 FPS. So yes. This is clearly overkill and this game runs silky smooth on this machine. Here we have another gorgeous looking racing game. This is Ridge Racer Unbounded. It is from 2012. I know that it uses DX9 once again, but it's quite GPU demanding. And yeah, it's still not silky smooth on this machine, even though it's uh, pretty overkill. We have once again a GPU bottleneck, just like for most games we tried. But yeah, once again, it's playable. We are running at 1080p with maximum details and also with 16x AF. Yeah, it's pretty smooth at around 40 FPS. And since this is a racing game, it's still playable at this FPS. So yes, Ridge Racer Unbounded is a fun game and is playable. Here we have Call of Duty Ghosts running at 1080p with high details. And we can see that it struggles quite a bit. This is once again a GPU bottleneck because the 5770 only has 1GB of VRAM which is not cutting it for this game. It's a lot more demanding than the previous Call of Duty games. So, and unfortunately uh, my gaming skills are pretty much ruined in this uh, footage because of the FPS. If you lower the resolution to 720p or if you lower the graphical settings to low or medium or if you simply upgrade your hardware, this should be playable on this computer. So yeah, Call of Duty Ghost is playable on the Core 2 Quad, but beware of the graphical settings and also your GPU. I also wanted to try out some Unity games, but unfortunately I only had the time to try one of them. And it is Imposter Hide, an Among Us fan game. We are running at 1080p in full screen. Oh my god, this is scary for a benchmark. And I chose to cap the game at 60 FPS. In the options menu, you have the graphical settings, which I have set to ultra. You can cap the game to either 30 FPS or 60 FPS. I chose 60 FPS because, as you know, it is much smoother and reduces the input lag. And this game is really difficult as you advance in levels. Uh, it's getting creepy. Here it was just me getting scared by the imposters about to be eaten alive. But anyway, this game is not that demanding. You just need a decent processor. Even a dual core could play this game. I have tried this on an Athlon 64X too. And it did run smooth just like here, just like on the uh, Core 2 Quad. So yes, Unity games will run on this system. Just beware if your graphics card is good enough for some of the more demanding Unity games. This PC is quite powerful to run some modern games using DirectX 11, but does it run Crisis? Kind of. We are running at 1080p with high details, no motion blur because I couldn't stand it. 
but we can see that it's it's okay it's not silk smooth not 60 fps locked but i would still consider this playable 30 to 40 fps as i mentioned even for fps games it's pretty good as long as the frame time is good enough crisis unfortunately is very unoptimized just like gta 4 but this game is heavily single threaded so this is why it runs poorly even on some modern machines and I did not select very high details because otherwise it will struggle and to play correctly at 1080p with very high details you need a very high clock speed of 4 GHz and beyond but for 2.8 GHz medium or high details should do the job for this game so yes it does run crisis and we have one more game Roblox I tried launching multiple games such as Natural, Disaster Survival, Micro Zombies, Rainbow Friends, etc. But unfortunately, we're getting an error and any game wouldn't launch. It would not launch simply. And I even tried disabling my antivirus because, you know, some antiviruses can prevent that um, by accident. But no, unfortunately, we get the same result. Roblox games wouldn't even launch and I do not know if it is an issue with Windows 7 because this game launches perfectly fine with Windows 11. However, the good news is that the Epic Games Launcher and Steam still do work on Windows 7 because some games like Rocket League, well, you can play offline, but I tried connecting online with these games. Even Fortnite, as you saw earlier, uh, failed to connect with the Epic Games servers and Rocket League unfortunately did the same thing. I do not know if it's once again an issue with Windows because with Windows 11 it works perfectly fine. But uh, at least some games should still support Windows 7 such as Genshin Impact for example. We will try that game uh, in the future with this exact same PC to see how the uh, Core 2 Quad performs in these modern games and we will have a lot more games when I have installed them because you know they are quite large and they take ages to install and yeah so I think it's time to wrap up this video and there we go guys that's the end of the video and I hope you really enjoyed my dream build video thank you for watching greetings from me from Hatsune Miku and Rin Kagamine which is my default background here and stay tuned for more videos and I will upgrade this build later on as I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video will upgrade to 8 gigabytes of RAM and also since I got a new graphics card for my main PC here I will uh, swap the video cards to a GTX 760 on this stream build and then we should get rid of the GPU bottleneck in most games so thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in another one. Stay safe, take care, peace, bye.